Hello everyone, and welcome to today's online lecture. I'm Mr. Alvins, and we're diving deep into one of the most fascinating processes in human biology, fertilization. Fertilization is the process by which a male gamete, the sperm cell, fuses with a female gamete, the egg cell or oocyte, to form a zygote. This single cell becomes the foundation for a new human life. Let's break this down step by step. Make sure you follow closely, and feel free to share your thoughts or questions in the comments section below, I'll be responding to them after the session. Step 1. Gamete Formation Also known as gametogenesis. Before fertilization can happen, both male and female gametes must be produced. Spermatogenesis. In males, this takes place in the testes, producing millions of sperm cells each day. A sperm cell has three main parts. Head. Contains the nucleus, holding genetic material, and the acrosome, packed with enzymes to break through the egg's barriers. Midpiece. Contains mitochondria, which provide energy for movement. Tail, flagellum, propels the sperm forward. Oogenesis. In females, this happens in the ovaries. Unlike males, females are born with all their eggs, but only one egg matures and is released during ovulation each cycle. The egg is much larger than the sperm and is surrounded by two protective layers. The corona radiata, the outer layer of follicular cells. The zona pellucida, a glycoprotein layer crucial for sperm binding. Step 2. Sperm transport and capacitation. After ejaculation, sperm are deposited into the vagina. From there, they must travel through the cervix, into the uterus, and towards the fallopian tubes, the typical site of fertilization. Here's a fun fact. Even though millions of sperm are released, only a few hundred make it to the fallopian tubes, survival of the fittest. Before they can fertilize the egg, sperm must undergo a process called capacitation, where their outer coating is stripped away, making them more motile and chemically ready to penetrate the egg. Step 3. Sperm Egg Recognition and Binding. Once the sperm reach the egg, they face two important layers. 1. Corona radiata. Sperm use enzymes from their acrosome to break through this outer layer. 2. Zona pellucida. Special receptors on the sperm's head bind to this layer, triggering the acrosomal reaction, a release of digestive enzymes that dissolve the zona pellucida, clearing the path to the egg's plasma membrane. Step 4. Sperm entry and cortical reaction. When a single sperm finally makes contact with the egg's membrane, their membranes fuse, allowing the sperm's nucleus to enter the egg's cytoplasm. Immediately after this, the cortical reaction occurs. The egg releases enzymes from cortical granules that harden the zona pellucida. This prevents polyspermy, when more than one sperm enters the egg, which would create an abnormal zygote with too many chromosomes. The egg now officially accepts only one sperm, the chosen one. Step 5. Pronuclear formation and syngamy. Once inside the egg, the sperm's nucleus enlarges, forming the male pronucleus. The egg completes its second meiotic division, forming the female pronucleus. These two pronuclei move toward each other, their membranes dissolve, and their chromosomes mix, a process called syngamy. At this point, the fertilized egg, now a zygote, contains a full set of 46 chromosomes, 23 from each parent. This marks the very beginning of human life. Step 6. Zygote formation and early development. Immediately, the zygote starts dividing through mitosis, forming two cells, then four, then eight, starting its journey down the fallopian tube toward the uterus for implantation. Discussion time. Fertilization is not just a scientific event, it's the spark of life. Now, I want to hear from you. 1. Which step of the fertilization process surprised you the most? 2. What do you think are the biggest barriers that sperm face on their journey to the egg? 3. How do you think modern medicine, like IVF, helps couples struggling with infertility? Drop your answers in the comments section below. I'll be going through them and responding, so let's keep the conversation going. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you found this lecture helpful. See you in the next session, where we'll explore embryonic development right after fertilization.